Hi, it's me, No Monkey, the guy who takes every opportunity to thoroughly abuse plugins to get every possible advantage. Today, I'll be explaining how you can do the same. Runelight is more widely used than the vanilla client. It runs better and has a series of plugins that can dramatically improve the playing experience. In PVM, these plugins provide visual clarity and the use of hotkeys for certain actions. Basically, if you want to get into PVM and don't use Runelight, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I'll be going through each of the main raids and the plugin settings I use for Chambers of Zarek, Theater of Blood, and Tombs of a Masket, as well as the Inferno. This will seem dead obvious to anyone who actively plays the game, but anyone looking to start using Runelight for the first time should know. It's very common to get scammed or fished by downloading the incorrect Runelight client. Runelight can be found at runelight.net. It can be also just found on the official OSRS page on the left-hand column. The only third-party clients allowed by Jagex are Runelight and HDOS, so don't be scammed into downloading anything else. Runelight has three main sections in the wrench button at the top right of the client. There is default plugin settings, profiles, and the plugin hub. Default plugin settings let you adjust everything that comes with Runelight and where you want to be adjusting things for the most part. Profiles allow you to save different configurations of the entire client with different settings. The plugin hub allows you to download approved plugins and install them directly into Runelight. Some of the most powerful plugins are found on the hub. You can only acquire plugins here. Don't go to any download links outside of this menu. This is every general plugin I use for PVM. Yes, this is a huge list. The majority of these plugins are found in the plugin hub. You can pause the video and search through the hub for any of these. Many of these, specifically menu entry swapper and custom menu swaps, improve how the game is played in such a substantial way that I would not even want to play without them. I'll be explaining each and every plugin, my settings, and how I use them. Monster Menu HP. This plugin makes it so when you right click a group of enemies, it shows their health by highlighting the name in incrementing amounts. Super useful for any AoE attack, such as Barrage or Chin. Monster HP Percentage. This shows the percent of HP remaining on a boss at the center of the boss's hitbox. This is useful for any boss with a phase change at specific health thresholds. Baba, Akka, Zebak, Warden, Nex, Duke, Vardorvis, etc. Radius Markers. This is one of the most versatile and powerful plugins. It can highlight a box around an NPC at customizable size and in different ways. Things such as Aggression Radius at Nex, Explosion Radius for Nylos or Volatile Baboons, or Combat Style Changes at Akka. I'll leave a paste bin to my personal marker import below. Menu Entry Swapper, also one of the most versatile and powerful plugins. This can swap menu order at a tremendous amount of locations, as well as allowing shift click on bank withdrawal and deposit. Tile Indicators, this plugin's main use is showing where your character is currently server side through the True Tile option. This helps with careful pathing around hazards like Sodatseg's maze or Zebak's poison and waves. NPC indicators, this highlights NPCs which you can specify through holding shift and right clicking any NPC in the game. You can tag things like their entire hitbox, their true tile, their outline, etc. The options for highlight true tile and highlight southwest true tile are what I use personally. Customizable XP drops, this is a tool to completely overhaul how your XP drops look with customizable font, text speed, color, and more. The most important feature is predicted hit, which can tell you what you hit based on your XP drop. This can be incorrect if the target has a unique XP multiplier, but even the multiplier can be customized. For leagues, I input 16 times, so even those hits would be accurate, for example. Dynamic tags, this is a really powerful plugin to show if you have missed a switch. If you are wearing a weapon and there is a piece of gear in your inventory corresponding to that said weapon style, then it will highlight it showing you that you missed it. You can add a customizable delay so it doesn't tag immediately, or else your inventory will be flashing every time you equip something. I use 4 seconds. Hold shift and right click a piece of gear and select the style it is under gear alert to tag an item. Keep in mind non-charged staves are considered melee weapons until you have autocast enabled. Entity Hider allows you to hide most things in the game. The useful ones are dead targets and thralls. NPC corpses can still be clicked on. Hiding these immediately prevents misclicks and cleans up the game. Thralls can also obscure hazard on the ground completely. 
so hiding them prevents this. Metronomes, visual and audio. Metronomes keep track of the server tick rate and allow for specific timing-based reaction. Visual metronome can paint a tick counter over your player character, over your true tile, or as a separate square as part of your UI. It can count up to a custom tick number, mine is at four for the raid counter, and the timing can be reset with a hotkey. This is incredibly good for Tob, for timing-based bosses like Scythe Zarpus, P2, and P3 Verzik. Audio metronome just plays an audio cue every tick. I don't use the audio metronome personally, but it is a useful tool for things like Inferno. You will dream of the clicking. Anti-drag. This prevents dragging your items in your inventory for a customizable amount of time. This helps a lot with switching gear very quickly and not dragging your items all over the place. Somewhere in the realm of 8 to 15 is what most use. You need to mess with it to find your preference. Boost information shows your current potion values in a UI overlay box. This can be oriented by holding Alt to resize and adjust. I use compact mode, which is found in RuneLight's base settings, the RuneLight plugin, and keep it neatly tucked against my inventory to show all my boosts at a glance. Key remapping. This lets you rebind your F keys to any keys you want. I personally use my number key row, which is what I'm used to. One for inventory, two prayer, three spells, four gear, five combat style. Reaching all the way to your F keys can take your fingers away from shift and control, which are needed for other things. Thrall Helper, Death Charge Reminder, and Companion Pet Plugin. Thrall Helper just reminds you when to resummon a Thrall with customizable annoying pop-up. Death Charge Reminder does the same. This one only matters if you have master CAs or better for longer thrall. Companion pet plugin is somewhat of a meme plugin as it turns your thrall into any pet in the game, but this is genuinely useful as it can be combined with entity hider to both render your thrall visually, but also prevent it from hiding things beneath it. Ping grapher and tick tracker. These plugins show current server stability. My settings have ping grapher worn with a chat message on a dramatically bad server tick as well as show a graph of lost ticks to server lag. You can adjust the size of this by dragging with Alt. Tick Tracker shows the percentage of ticks that are close to 600 MS. A closer percentage to 100% on a server is better. Keep in mind it picks up running over loading lines as a lost tick, so you will never reach 100%. This cannot be adjusted with Alt and needs to be manually moved with the height selector. Custom Menu Swaps. This is one of, if not the most useful plugin in the game. This allows you to customize the order of entries in any menu. A great example is Akka. When Butterflying and Akka steps through his shadow, I have it customized so that the shadow will always be the priority left click. Another example is Nex's Ice Prison. I have it swapped so the Stalagmite is always attack over Nex. This is incredibly versatile and can be even used outside of PVM. If you have multiple menu entries that you have entered in the same menu, the plugin lists the most bottom entry at the top, which is the opposite of what you would think. An asterisk can be used as a wildcard, so you don't need to enter the entire enemy combat level or work for things like multiple potion doses. Ending Xerix Aid with an asterisk tells Runelight to apply that to all doses of Xerix Aid. You can get extremely creative with this. I use shift click for swapping my quick prayers, for example. You can also add hotkeys for banking, allowing you to have a hotkey for withdraw all and to eat potion all separately, allowing you to gear incredibly quickly while within the bank interface charge calculator. This is a newer plugin I've started using. It allows you to recharge your staff with a custom number of charges by clicking a button in the chat prompt. This is useful for pulling extra runes out of staves in the small quantity for things like spellbook swap and death charge. These plugin settings I didn't show either because they're going to completely vary depending on setup or that I didn't adjust them whatsoever. GPU especially is going to depend on monitor, game resolution, lighting, etc. Let's talk about plugins specific to Chambers of Zarek. The majority of the plugins are all bundled under Cox Editions plugin, but there's a handful of others I also use. I'm going to go through each room. Cox Editions has some extremely important general settings. The instance timer allows you to enter the raid the tick the raid counter starts. Entering on zero is what allows me to pull Tekton to me off the anvil instantly. Left click CC is huge for resetting. Crab Solver and Stun Timer. I use the separate plugin to Cox Editions. These show icons for what style are required to paint the crabs on the crystals, as well as a tick timer over the crabs after you smash them for how long they will remain still. Cox Vanguards. This plugin highlights the style of each Vanguard, as well as a number for how much you can damage each Vanguard before they reset. The plugin will add an asterisk to the end of their HP when that specific Vanguard is in the kill threshold, but the others aren't. When all three are at threshold, the HP overlay disappears and they can all be killed. Bat Locator. This plugin can help you find bats in the thieving room. 
by opening chests and deducing where it is. It also permanently marks poison chest as green. At Vespula, the prayer enhanced timer in Cox Editions adds a timer for when enhanced will give you a prayer point. This is really important for Vespula. You can remove this from your boost information panel by holding shift and right clicking it and hitting detach. This lets you move it where you want. I keep it right next to my quick prayers for Vespula. Cox Editions is most useful at Ulm. You can highlight where Ulm is going to pop up at the start of the room, giving you precious time to react. Ulm Hand's health just overlays current HP over his limbs, so you can tell exactly when they die. You can replace Ulm orbs with different projectiles like Warden attacks, but I don't do this personally. Ulm phase panel is really important as it tells you immediately what phase Ulm is on, crystal, flame, or acid. It has loads of other small things. The way I have it set up is on screen. Moving on to Tob, this also has a sweet plugin just like Chambers, Tob QOL. This includes almost everything I use inside of Tob. For general settings, bank all and supply chest buy one. Just rebind the left clicks on loot chests and supply chests to those options. Better than right click. Loot reminder, salve reminder, and spellbook reminder warn you if you are missing any items or forgot to claim loot before you enter and hold your team up. At Maiden, I just enable crab health as a percent so I know when to stop hitting them. You can show leaks if you want to min-max with your team and see what went wrong. I use True Tile on all the crabs and mark the spawn locations of the waves so I can hover my mouse exactly where I need to freeze them. I also mark the Tebow line so I know where I can bow with the full delay on my Tebow shots. At Bloat, I just hide the ceiling chains. Just like Maiden, there's a min-max setting for teamwork. You can hide the ground with ground object hider and replace it with a skybox to make the shadows more obvious. Just type exclamation point bloat floor in my Twitch chat for the command on how to do it. There's also a lot of other setting commands in my chat as well. Nilocus has a ton of useful plugins. Tob QOL can show pillar HP, hide the pillars if you want to, recolor various menu options to help you right click the right crab, and can show the instance timer to enter the room faster. I also use Nilo death indicators. This syncs Nilos with your teammates in your party and hides the corpse the instant lethal damage is traveling towards them by anyone in your team. I also use Nylor, which can show which wave a Nylok is spawned on, so you can prioritize killing the fresher ones. Nylor also adds a button on the side of the interface that lets you swap your role, and swaps your left click to prioritize the Nylos for that role. At Sodatseg, Tob QOL allows you to change the projectile on his attacks, so they're much easier to see. I use Inferno Blob projectiles. You can hide the white screen for the maze, hide the rocks in the underworld, and add an alarm for the death ball when he fires it. I use a custom sound swap death ball alarm, so I don't. At Zarpus, I use Tob QL's screech warning and the instance timer to enter much faster. I use ground markers to show important screech tiles, but beyond that, I don't use much in this room. For Verzik, I use Tob QL for the health percentage on red crabs, marking the tornadoes on P3. You can also set an alarm for the green ball on P3, but I don't use this personally. I use radius markers to set the explosion proc area for the Nylos. You simply touch your true tile against the side and move at least three tiles away to avoid full damage. I have a cacophony of ground markers in this room, but they are for various scales and methods. So for most, they wouldn't be useful. Boac, solo tiles, etc. Visual metronome is very useful for P3 if you do not know the timing for one tick tanking well. You can set a seven tick metronome and click under every seventh tick. Moving on to Toa, even Toa has a sweet plugin. This one is just called Tombs of a Masket. This has various indicators and helpers in each room, just like the other major plugins for the other raids. The main plugin can give indicators when you forget a pickaxe, even preventing exit from the raid if you have the pick with you. It gives an indicator on when to mine the mirror puzzle and indicators on where to place the mirrors for that puzzle. It solves all of the puzzles before Kefre, showing where to move and what tiles slash obelisk you've already hit. There's also the app Mechan wave helper option. This shows a side panel telling you what monkey waves spawn on what wave. This can help with learning. In monkey rooms, I highlight the true tiles on all monkeys, especially the cursed and volatile baboons. I set my shift click on the potions to use so I can use it on other people. The monster menu HP plugin can be useful for which monkey to chin. You want to target the ones with higher HP. Dynamic tags is also really important for not missing switches. The important thing at ba ba is to add her HP with monster HP percentage so I know exactly when to avoid the gap. The thresholds are 66% and 33% of her HP. I outline the boulder with ID 11783 to show a very obvious outline on the cracked boulder. 
I also marked those yellow tiles to show where I can skip boulders from normally and make it all the way to Baba. The extra line in Christmas colors is where I can skip with an alt following me. At Kefri, I don't use anything outside of the general plugin list, nothing major, so moving on. At Zebak, I use Monster HP Percentage because his phases are roughly every 15% for each special. True Tile on the waves can help know exactly where they are. You can mark these like any monster. The ground markers on the side indicate safe areas from opposite spawn bloods. True Tiles on the jugs and blood spawns is also really helpful. Akka has a lot going on. I have a very complicated ground marker setup for my alt ladder skip, but most won't need these. If you do want these, the command is exclamation point Akka tech in my Twitch chat. I radius mark Akka for all three styles he uses with color coding, so I know the instant he has swapped styles and what to. I mark Akka's true tile to easily butterfly him and know when to move without worrying about guessing his animation. I also use true tile on all the orbs. But I've heard this confuses a lot of people, so just use what works for you. Warden, I don't use anything specific. I'd highly recommend hiding thralls for this fight because it hides important ground indicators on all phases. Toa just uses a lot of general use plugins and gets less power out of the sweet plugin. Inferno has quite a few useful tools. Recently, it says our HP tracker plugin was added. This can show HP of all your pillars and the monsters inside, as well as warn about wrong spellbook before you enter. Tile indicators on all mobs is really important so you can play Tetris with them behind pillars and tell exactly how they are oriented. Most of my ground markers are positional indicators for speedruns rather than for casual runs. Inferno Stats plugin can also provide the current wave and next wave, as well as the mobs included if you want. I'm sure I'm forgetting some minor things, but this is the vast majority of plugins I use for everyday PVM. I have a lot more nuanced commands in my Twitch chat for specific setup at certain bosses, so you can always check there for more options. The general plugins are so important for everything I do that I wanted a video showing people who don't know these exist what they are, and how to use them. Plugins fill the gap where Jagex lack the tools to give good feedback, visual clarity, and general QOL in all of the raids and PVM in general. And that's it for the video. Leave a like if you liked it and or subscribe. Thanks guys.